The emotional purgatorio syndrome is basically a concept which I designed for, well, that state in which people always seem to have mixed feelings about things. Now, mixed feelings is a situation in which you both like and don't like something, and it can be quite broad in people's experiences. It is also a form of self-sabotage, because many people want something, but at the same time they know they're not worthy of that, or that might not happen, and I'm guessing the most commonly, well, the environment which has people feel this the most is usually video games where everyone wants to achieve something they want to do something irrespective of difficulty but there's always that sensation that you're not good enough you're not worthy yet or different aspects of this um, self-sabotage now self-sabotage in itself many people will try to um, portray this as a mental point uh, they want to, you know, there are psychologists and people who will tell you, you know, tips and tricks how to no longer sa sabotage yourself and how to build new habits. And see, I've also said, the more you practice something, the better you become at it. If you practice self-sabotage, you're also going to become better at it. If you practice better, uh, you know, other, how to call them, let's say habits, right? And you practice them, let's say uh, you don't take care much of yourself, right? The more you practice that, the more suicidal you'll become by nature, right? Or let's say self-destructive. Now, the point is, if you start actually taking care of yourself, the point is that habit will grow slowly and surely. Let's say that you practice this 10 times longer and better than the self-destructive impulses. See, that's what trainers, you know, physical training, people, uh, you know, psychologists will suggest you. But you know that that's not entirely right. Why? Because uh, even if you'll practice that, let's say, I don't know, you've been self-destructive for five years and you practice self-care and the such for 20 years, the point is you still have a karma. See, everything that you practice, everything that you do, including your breathing, the very simple fact that you're alive leaves some imprints behind. And the point is, the more self-destruction you do, it doesn't matter how long throughout your life, the point is that those impulses will still exist. Now, those impulses, they also originate in your ancestral karma. See, we all come into this world by a mother and by a father. Now, the point is, there are very few people who achieve such a level of power in which they can create a physical body and they can simply incarnate it again and again, times and times again, so they will look the same and they will simply bypass the cycle of birth now this is a power that is not sci-fi but obviously it is something beyond most people's uh, imagination now uh, and obviously expectation of reality most people would simply disregard such a power but the point is such cosmic powers can be achieved through well a lot of uh, let's say training now when it comes to you know the lower impulses these lower impulses will be specific to you thanks to your previous lifetimes because obviously you've had self-destructive lifetimes before and well the karma of your parents also is weighing down on your shoulders and your parents also weighed have the karmic weight of their ancestors so basically every child has a lot of karma put on their backs now, obviously, this can be more or can be less, but self-destructive impulses don't necessarily originate in you. The moment one slips back into unconsciousness, every, every karmic aspect of you will simply creep back in. Usually, that's self-destructive behaviors, because thousands of years of karma, well, have been directed to, you know, ignorance, right? We have a background of ignorance as a race and as individuals because, well, ignorant individuals will represent an ignorant race, mainly an ignorant race, not always. But see, the point is, even if you practice the opposite, it doesn't matter much because that which has been, let's say, not serving you will still try to creep back in and you will have those moments when you'll feel bad again, you'll feel like committing self-destruction again. 
right? Because it's basically a karma, it is an impulse. You don't have to follow it, right? It is just an imprint of what you have done once and it try to, tries to creep back in. Now, where psychologists fail is that they will tell you to simply focus on the positive part, but you will never be able to fully focus on the positive part. So the point is, Every time something karmic happens, don't simply take it into account. At the same time, they will, most people will fail you and they will tell you to not think about it. When you don't think about it or when you force it outside of you, you're basically pushing it away. Now, if you've learned in physics, every action has a reaction. If you push something away from you, it will come back at least with a force equal to your force of pushing it away. And at the same time, you will feel that it is draining, right? Just like people who lie a lot, right? They are pushing the truth away, but it is still coming back at them. That's the reason why they need more and more uh, lies, right? Because a lie can only be supported by further lies, right? Further and further layers of lies, because it is nothing else uh, but let's call it a sand castle and the water is chipping at it slowly and surely right so you need layers and layers and layers right all these lower vibrations need constant layering and over layering because they can't simply stand forever right especially nowadays that the vibration of human humanity is increasing so the point is um, don't simply react to things and just embrace them Every time you feel self-destructive, embrace that part, because it is a part of yourself. It is energy that you have directed through your body into certain actions. The point is, don't do those self-destructive things, but just be mindful of the fact that they exist. And also, be mindful of the lesson. You have gone through those, you have find, found the right people, or you have taken the right decisions out of a sudden, maybe, probably there wasn't anyone to tell you to no longer do that, but the pain was enough and you said suddenly, okay, enough of this, right? So embrace that, those moments as well. Cherish more those moments that caused the change, right? And acknowledge the fact that those uh, karmic aspects of your life exist and they will exist throughout your life. You simply can't purge them. Well, there are practices, right, that can allow you to purge things, but basically, if you purge all your karma, you simply no longer will exist. That is something that people don't understand. They think that if they cure their karma, they will be, you know, fully free. Karma is not here to punish you. Karma is just an imprint. It is basically, let's call it like a history, right? Just like the history books that we have. Now, obviously, our history can be shaped by anyone especially the older people, right? You don't have any proof that whatever is in the history books is true, but taking it at face value, the point is that's basically it, right? Your karma, your karma you can't fool it because it is there, right? If you're curious about it, just let it flow through you and you will see that all the bad impulses will sooner or later uh, rise up and you will see that you can't fool those, right? Uh, there will always be some self-destructive issues because thousands of years of such karma in our ancestors will obviously be very strong. Now these parts are basically shatters of one's, one's being, right? So these splinters, these shatters have to be reintegrated into your being. You don't have to run away from them. Imagine liars, right? Liars always run away from the truth and they have to do again worse and worse things. They have to lie, they have to deceive, they have to manipulate, and they have to keep track of everything, and they have to consume so much energy that they also become vampiric, right? So when you're doing the right things, the point is, well, that doesn't consume any energy, right? So the point is, every action that you do will leave an imprint. Don't focus necessarily on the bad things. Cherish them that they exist and embrace them because basically they are part of your existence. Embracing them means just taking them into account without any emotional or psychological attachment, right? Because, for example, smoking, right? If you feel like smoking again, simply don't. Because basically there is nothing that will disallow you, there is nothing that will break your habit of smoking, right? Uh, there are medicine and the such, but they are ultimately just money grabs. You either give up smoking for goods or you simply keep smoking. There is no other way. I mean, even if you smoke one cigar per month, it's still basically smoking. It still hurts your body. Now, point be said, uh, simply embrace the fact that you feel an urge to smoke. The point is, 
think about all the bad moments when you actually had you know um, uh, you know those horrible sensations that resulted from your self-destructive behaviors right and think about how good you felt when you no longer did it or when you did it much less now many people might ask but what would I do in case it doesn't work well it means your karmic imprint is strong enough and well there are still let's say it from a religious standpoint things you have to pay for there is still karma you need to pay for and well that might take a long time of self-destruction probably but the point is usually you can bypass you can transcend certain things if you find the right people to simply guide you right there are sadhanas and all sorts of things that people can uh, can uh, you know follow to well reveal problems within them see a bad habit is basically a bad perception about the world you feel that you're useless and that you must punish yourself right and if you punish yourself most likely there will be that wonderful being who will step into your life probably god or whatever other human that will step into your life and will solve all your problems see the mind is constantly confused right every time you take your mind into account you're always doubtful you can't believe this you can't believe that that's way beyond your belief and everything that you might want uh, well it's always out of reach it's always hard to achieve you know that, that's how the mind simply functions it is just an engine for creation it is something that needs to guide you towards a certain outcome it's not necessarily a decision making tool because when it comes to decisions and obviously Libras know it the best in this case you will always have a hard time choosing because the mind is always confused this confusion well that is why everyone who is a slave of the mind and who needs meaning in life and as such they're always confused they don't have a sense of direction and as such or they just force themselves to have one but they simply tunnel themselves out of all the other possibilities right so now the point is see if the mind is constantly confused then obviously you will also be in this well idea of an emotional psychological and well mental delirium right because everything that you would want to achieve everything that you will pursue you're still confused whether to do that or not right even when you become certain of something there will always be uncertainties right because well as i said the mind is always confused so well this video is a bit chaotic but i kind of explained why people will always feel mixed uh, feelings right because well as i said if the mind is confused it doesn't know which direction to go Right? it doesn't have a sense of direction you through your introspection you through your uh, intuition should have a sense of direction because intuition doesn't make sense to most people because most people are slaves of the mind and well intuition is nothing else than bypassing the mind all this being said you are appreciated take care and hopefully this video was introspective enough uh, have an awesome day you are appreciated Welcome for welcome around. Thank you for stopping by. And well, all this being said, very gentle board signing out.